and welcome to the show. While National League rugby teams enjoyed a rest week, the World Cup got underway. It was a dry affair in the desert between England and USA, but there's been plenty of drama to whet the appetite in National 2 West. Hinkley have put in an impressive display in the first 10 rounds, going unbeaten at home since round two to be in the top four. But Latonians are looking to end that run, having gone unbeaten in their last three. It's a case of fast backs against packed power in the Midlands. Okay, the number one is Brad. Number seven is to six is Tom, and then a penalty on the 22. They are really enjoying the uh, physical contest, to say the least. So, Tom Jones. Kicking through, and he does get it. Well, I'm going to put one of them in, Rory. Hinkley saying, why, 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 <laughs> referee? But as for Latonians, it's not unusual from Tom Jones. 3-0 for them. Ben Poynton holding over Josh Knott at the scrub. Well, it collapses again at the front. It will be a free kick option to Luctonians. They're just struggling. Well, no, he turns it over. And I think there must have been a bit of dissent from Luctonians. And as you can suspect, Joe Wilson going for the posts. This to draw the home side level. Wilson, no problems for him. And again, they come together. This time, Luctonians still under pressure, but it's quickly <coughs> taken by points and really sharp from the scrum half, and he'll make it all the way. Oh, well, Luc oh. Luctonians are absolutely furious at that. Josh Knott put the ball in to the scrum, but didn't put it in enough. And it allowed Ben Points to just pick it out like someone in the Black Friday sales and just run around the side and dust it over the line. I'm well, Ooh. you just said, you see it all at Hinkley, and there's another yeah. first for me. Unbelievable stuff. Well deserved. Goodness. Hackley will chase it down, as will Wheeler. But a great Oi. take from Hibbard, and they will go against James Wheeler. Bandled into him, and the card is coming out unsurprisingly. Nothing that Wheeler could do to stop his momentum. Hibbard was already about 30,000 feet up. I think it's the right decision. I think he's in the air. I think. Obviously, you've got to play a welfare if you've run into a person at pace. It's a chance he's getting hurt. Finding Cheshire gets a second burst of pace. And Luxonians are actually able to survive that test, not kicking it over. And this is actually chased on. What a brilliant touch on the boot that is from Charlie Grimes. And Charlie Grimes has the pitch at his mercy. The 14 men will score through their star winger, Charlie Grimes. What a kick from Jordan Not What a touch from Real. Charlie Grimes. What a run from the number 14, his seventh try of the season, and what a way to score it. Hell of a finish. Poynton puts it in, no problem for him. Salt keep looks to get them driving. Keep they it can on. see the struggle is there for keep the flankers for Luctonians. They're gonna keep moving. The turn comes from Salt. He goes for the line, and he gets it over. Hinkley, Hulk out to send Luctonians back over their own line. And Alex to rub the salt in the wound. That's Hinkley all over, to be honest. As a, as a bat player, anyway, we don't see much ball from five metres out. Harry Whiteman with the carry. Silver, lovely hand. Parks gets it away. And another pass will get them over the line. Lactonians take their time. And they work their way out to the left wing. But a response comes. Josh Watkins. Wonderful offload from Tom Jones to keep it moving. But they have been knocking on that door for the last five minutes and Lottonians finally bring it down. And, well, there's claims for something. Advantage is coming to the home Let's side. Go. Points and picks it out. Into Powell. Go on. Looks for the run. Go on, move I'll it. Pick it Joe Wilson and he's got Slater on his outside, but the fullback won't need him. Joe Wilson bundling and driving his way over that line and forcing Hinkley back into the lead. Hinkley maintain their fortress in the Midlands. Full time. Hinkley 24, Lactonians 20. You seem to have almost a near perfect kicking day today. Uh, yeah, kicking boots were on today. They don't always go that way, especially with our little uh, little slope here, but we got the bounce of the ball today, so it was, it was good. I'm pleased with it. And just tell me through your try, the winning try. Well, it were, it, I'm going to be honest, it wasn't my try. Lammy was there, luckily, to, to receive it. So as I went over, turned, one of their hands came in, knocked it on, out of my hands, into Lammy's, and, and he was there for the try, so. A, a uh, team try. It was a team <laughs> try. I'll take the assist, though, I will. 
Um, I think last year we were a bit guilty of maybe spending too much time on analysing the opposition. Um, but this year we've been certainly just focusing on our own responsibilities and that's been going on on the pitch. Um, and to say kind of like getting a result like today with that many mistakes that were still out there and we, we will speak about them. Um, just speaks volume of the team. Let's start our National 1 highlights at Brickfields with a meeting of two top half sides aiming for consistency. It was a battle in the mud between Plymouth Albion and Roslyn Park which got going in the fourth minute. Tom Putt's penalty putting the home side ahead. With numerous cards shown throughout the game, including a red for Albion's George Mills, Plymouth still scored the first try through Ramos Ricards. With 15 minutes to go, Park claimed a try back through Harry Ledger in the corner, but the home side held firm for a fourth consecutive victory on Herbie Stupple's 200th appearance. Nearly 300 miles north, Sale FC were blown away by a ferocious start from Darlington Modem Park. Yari Fantini with their second in the first 18 minutes. Matt Minogue ensured a scoring bonus after just 28 minutes, creating a mountain for the high flyers to climb. Josh Brown chipping away. But the Greater Manchester side put four unanswered tries past the Northeasterners to maintain their winning ways at Haywood Road. Neville Edwards starring. The bottom two met at Molesley Road and it was dominated by Isha, Harvey Scott taking the first of 24 unanswered first half points. The only try of the second half saw Joe Vagina score a rehearsed line-out leading to an unopposed try, Hull offering up little competition in what should have been a must-win. The Sycamore was hosted an eye-catching clash. Leeds Tykes needed tied Maxwell Whiteley's boot to stay ahead of Birmingham Mosley before the break. An excellent second half performance from Daniel Lewis saw the visitors take 16 points for Birmingham, but it was undone in the dying stages where Matt Burke scored for a share of the points. It was a very evenly matched game. Um, good battles at the line out the scrum. Birmingham took their two tries really well um, and then that left us a bit of a fight back at the end to get the draw. The, the boys didn't give up, uh, fought back and then being camped on their line we managed to get over and uh, draw the game which was probably a fair result in reflection. Leaders Rams were asked a big question in round 10 and another came at Veritas Park when Taunton Titans led on 50 minutes through Isaac Dalton. The 100 percenters lost on their trip to Somerset last season, but this time matched the pack power. James McRae bagging the lead and another bonus point. Michael Dyke's brace and Max Heyman's score put Rams out of sight, continuing to keep pace with Hartbury College's record start. The dramatic games continue for Cambridge. Chinner, having parted company with Rich Thorpe, took a surprise lead into half-time when Nick Smith finished a blistering move. Wanting to avoid another upset, Quake Uesiedu took matters into his own hands, scoring four tries to make their position unassailable with some brilliant rugby. Chinna pushed for a second away win of the season, but Scott Lloyd's score was enough to keep them at bay and bag a 14th consecutive win at Volak Park. And a dizzying game at Dockham Road. Cinderford have drawn their last two games, something that inspired Nathan Taylor to a first half hat trick. Bishop Stortford have been strong on the road and a rejuvenated second half put Jake Morris through in style, a third win on the road in a row in their sights. But the last minute would decide things in Gloucestershire once again, the opportunity to utilise the pack gobbled up by Cinderford for Nathan Taylor to bag the win. Cue those celebrations. Round 11 was an amazing advert for the thrills of National 1. Six of the seven games saw the team separated by five points or less. No prizes for guessing, the odd one out. The big change is Sale FC capitalising on Roslyn Park's southwest slip-up. Cinderford are seven points off Cambridge, Plymouth, Albion, Titan up the top seven. There are no positional changes at the bottom, but it's tighter. Five teams took two points. Isha's win puts them four off Taunton Titans. Hull are getting stranded. Back in that two west, we head 20 miles north for a Midlands derby at the Crumb. And this derby didn't disappoint. Loughborough students took an 11-point lead into the break. Charlie Cadogan's fifth try in four games getting them started. But league leaders Leicester Lions flipped the result three minutes after the restart. Alex Wilkinson's score converted by Ben Youngs for a one-point lead. Defence would be the name of the game. Gareth Collins' side holding out against the students before Oliver Taylor grabbed the sixth for a sixth consecutive win. 
While Clifton lost top try scorer Finlay Sharp to New Zealand, the Bristol side kept up their scoring ways against Newport Salop. Brad Talbot with a hat trick. The team from Shropshire could not cope with the pack power they faced, failing to threaten once as Dan Brody scored the best try of the day at Station Road. Red Ruth didn't want to miss out on the scoring, enjoying a muddy day at the wreck as Tommy Phillips started their scoring after 10 minutes. With only three tries against Barnstable, Fraser Honey's kicking earned 14 points, including a stunning penalty from the halfway line in a masterful display. 150 miles along the Severn estuary, Ding's Crusaders had their own superstar in scrum half Tom Knight, scurrying his way over the line twice for a first quarter lead. Hornets have proved tricky customers in their debut season at home and Charlie Carter's try to draw the host level showed their desire to match Ding's attacking rugby. But three tries in 17 minutes would see the Bristol side stretch clear. Sam Slade bagging the bonus point win to get back to winning ways. And Stoughton Park put on a show. Behind at the break, Dan Rundle stepped up for Stourbridge in style to put them ahead of Bourneville with an hour to go. The Birmingham side responded immediately through Rhys Williams, but the host stayed in the hunt with Matt Mosley's score. Tom Burrow's hat-trick would secure a first win of the season for Bourneville, but had to wait until the last play for confirmation as Stourbridge were held up. Hopefully this is something that can kick, kick start and propel us forward um, for the rest of the season. So a really great advert for National League Rugby, I think, for the neutral. Uh, probably not so much for the for the, the, the teams involved and the coaches as far as nerves and things like that on the sidelines. But no, the boys, um, you know, both were, were absolutely outstanding. And, you know. What drama in the six National 2 West games? Exeter University's clash with Old Red Cliffians was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch at Topsham. It's as you were once again at the top. The leading five teams all took bonus point wins. Exeter's delayed game sees Luctonians close the gap and it's the same story for four of the seven teams at the bottom. Bourneville's first win since April propels them to 12th. Stourbridge's bonus points keep them off bottom. Here's the action from National 2 North as the leading pair aim for five more points on the road. And it was an easy task for Sedgley Park at Huddersfield. The Nat 2 North leaders got started after 14 minutes with Rhys Henderson's 11th try of the season. When George Bordill scored the fourth try for a bonus point just before the break, a comprehensive performance had kept the unbeaten start safe for the visitors. While Huddersfield were not able to compete for victory, they did put a shift in at Lockwood Park. Lewis Bradley pushing him over in the last play for a vital bonus point. 30 miles south, Fylde made hard work of keeping up at the top on a trip to Sheffield. A penalty from Gregory Smith, their only reward from the first 40 minutes. But the try scoring tap was turned on at Abbeydale Park over a 13 minute spell. Ben Turner taking two, but missing a scoring bonus. Let's head to Northumberland, where Harrogate weren't put off by the conditions for a rapid start. Will Yates scoring in consecutive games? But Tyndale were also not in a mood to mess around. Louis Franklin ensuring their time ahead in the game would last just three minutes. While the Park Lane side's victory was asserted through Rob Parker, Harrogate Sam Fox gave the home fans something to smile about with a last minute drop goal. The top four clash saw Otley take the spoils in a hard fought Yorkshire derby. Ex Titan Luke Cole finishing off a well worked drive for a 23 12 lead at half time. Otley had already secured the bonus point through Duncan Darling, but Rotherham Titans took something home as Matt Challen has scored the fourth in the last play. Absolutely fantastic. I'm uh, over the moon, chuffed for the boys um, for their performance. We haven't quite delivered our game 100% so far this year and we've gone out there and, and put it on in spades. Um, we've been really working really hard in our game over these last couple of months to expand it and that worked in our favour in relation to what we were going to see from a Rotherham team. Um, League record try scorer Jamie Broadley started the game for Sheffield Tigers with a bang, intercepting a Wharfdale attack and strolling over in the first minute. The side from the avenue were aiming for first back-to-back -back wins since the opening rounds and Oscar Canny finally got them on the board with 14 minutes left. 
But Tigers Simon Fruin would have the last laugh at Dawn Moore as he scored in the dying moments of the game. Chester bounced back from last week's defeat as they conquered Bladen. Gethin Long got things started after he finished off a quick tap penalty in the 22. Ralph Appleby replied almost instantaneously for Bladen as he was driven over following a close range line out. After the break and following a red card for the Red Men from Bladen, Harrison Vare collected his own kick to seal the win and the bonus point. And Lightfoot's green lane was lit up. Discipline was the key word for Hull Ionians. Alan Hudson finding his way to the line for a one point lead. Preston Grasshoppers would prove to be tough opponents and were within one point of the third place side at half time when Chris Taylor went over. But a sin bin early in the second half across the bottom half side, Lucas Powell taking what would prove to be the winning try in a tense affair. Fans were kept on the edge of their seats this week in National 2 North. 14 of the 43 tries scored in the seven games came in the final quarter. Sedgley Park's bonus point gives them a crucial edge ahead of Fylde. Hull Ionians and Otley continue to chase them down. Chester overtake Rotherham Titans. Sheffield Tigers mid-table win matches rivals Wharfdale. Three of the bottom four took bonus points. Bladen had deducted five points, dropping to the root for the first time this season. And let's finish in National 2 East as leaders Blackheath look to build on their momentum from the rest week's heavy win. And it was an onslaught from Blackheath putting 14 tries past a weary Westcliff, the first coming just a minute in from second row Tom Stradwick. It's the biggest margin of victory in National League Rugby this season. Brendan McMillan ensuring a bonus point was secured from the set piece after just 15 minutes. The high scoring matches continued as Dorking thrashed North Walsham. 40 points were scored in the first half, including two tries from Austin Emans. North Walsham's defence was stronger in the third quarter, but it couldn't match Dorking's intensity. Toby McRae getting over on a big day at the big field. Back in the capital, Barnes stayed in the promotion race, but had to work hard. Cameron Ruddock getting the scoring started. While Berry St Edmunds scored with Will Christie, George Makepeace Cubitt boot was the key with 12 kicked points to keep the Barnes Elms side ahead at the break. The game ended as it began with a match ceiling try from Paddy McJewel, ensuring a third consecutive win and an unbeaten November for Barnes. Worthing and Tunbridge Juddians provided one of the most entertaining games of the weekend. Raiders Curtis Barnes opening the scoring almost immediately. While TJs enjoyed a second half flurry with Perry Parker's score, a late try from Harrison Sims ensured maximum points for the home side. Um, yeah, I mean, we prepped really hard in the week to um, try and take away their assets. I think we were really disciplined in the way they played first half. Second half, we knew that they were going to throw the kitchen sink at us, so it's, it's no surprise if they get a couple of tries back. Um, but I think we rode that storm really well and ended up finishing the game on the much better side, so we're really happy with that. I mean, please, if we go into Christmas, we'll back at 20 points. 85 miles east, Canterbury's hopes for a first win since the end of October were well founded at half time when Guy Hilton put them five points ahead. Old Albanian have boasted a young and fast attacking side this season. Jared Sage powering through nine minutes after the restart to regain the advantage. No, it would be all Dan George's side from that point. Alex Newt adding a try to his seven kicked points for a comfortable win at the Marine Travel Park. A 10 try route unfolded in Rochford which got started after just two minutes by visitors Guernsey as Tom Seelan finished a pack move. Six of the tries would come before the break, with Rochford 100 taking the last through Paul Bradley to ensure the bottom half sides were all square at the break. But the second 40 belonged to the Islanders, Hugo Culverhouse finishing a sweeping move for a first away win of the season. And a knockout game at Noel Paddock Seven Oaks rallied from their thumping by Blackheath when Ollie Shortcliffe strode through a gap in the Henley Hawks defence. The Thames side have slipped dangerously with one win in four, but a penalty try on 55 minutes looked to have them on the right track again. Ben Adams had something to say about it though. Seven Oaks forced errors out of Hawks 
allowing their kicker two penalties for a big upset in the last 10 minutes. So a high-scoring day in National 2 East. Of the 63 tries scored across the seven games, Blackheath and Dorking took 23 of them. Check out the YouTube channel for loads of exciting content. The top four all took bonus point wins to stay in the same positions. Worthing's big win at Tunbridge Juddians put them above the Kent side and Bury St Edmunds. Henley Hawks' slide downwards continues, but they still have a cushion over Guernsey. And the bottom three conceded 185 points between them. Well, that's it from Hinkley. Brilliant tries and big moments across the 27 games of National League Rugby. Who needs a World Cup? See you next week. What's up guys, Warren Muggleson here. Thank you so much for watching that National League Rugby video. For more from the third and fourth tiers of English Rugby, then subscribe just over here. And don't forget to click the bell too, so you're notified when new content is published. That one there. Click it and go.